Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 13. Do princesses dream of magic sheep? And we get our first reference of the episode to the movie Blade Runner. Do androids dream of electric sheep? This episode is great, and it's my preferred canon version of a story like this, because they did have one like this in the comic books when we got Nightmare Rarity, but... But I prefer this story, and I think this story in a way contradicts the comics, so I'm glad because this is more canon. Except that the Tantabus isn't anything like the thing that possessed Luna in the comic, which turned around and created Nightmare Rarity. Even though it was causing nightmares for the main six, the Tantabus is a creature thing that Luna created, so it's not the force that turned her evil. I still like this better than the Nightmare Rarity arc, even though the design for Nightmare Rarity is gorgeous. It's just there were lots of problems with the Nightmare Rarity arc. Yes, but we're not here to talk about the Nightmare Rarity arc. We are here to talk about this awesome Luna episode. Yay, episode 13 for the Princess of the Night. <laughs> yes, I really like the episode. There was a lot of stuff going on. I like how we get a nice reference back to Rainbow Powers, which is awesome. We get to see Nightmare Moon again, and we get a new creature. Woohoo! <laughs> For all of one episode, since she seemed to have absorbed it back into herself by the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. And I just remembered this reference later in the episode. I really got the fact that Fluttershy can still imagine herself as Flutterbat. Mm -hmm. And I love how you can't go in order at all. <laughs> one thing just popped in my head. If, they, if I don't say them, I'll forget them. All right, all right, Pinkie Pie, I get it. <laughs> and to me, it kind of shows, I think, maybe she thinks that version of herself is the more powerful version of herself. But now we can go back to the beginning of the episode, and you can point out your stuff along the way. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, to start with, at the very beginning, I didn't necessarily think it was a dream. I thought this whole thing might be like the danger room. <laughs> equivalent of in Equestria, because Luna directed the Tantabus to do the worst possible thing that it could, and it turned her into Nightmare Moon, and the main six had to call on their rainbow powers to fix it. So that sounds like a training simulation to me. <laughs> Actually, when I saw the beginning of the episode, I pretty much went, yeah, this is a dream, right off the bat. It just seemed like that. I didn't even think it was any kind of training room or anything. I just went, dream? And this type of creature invading it, and that was pretty much what I got. Well, Luna was directing the Tantabus in the beginning, so to me, obviously, it wasn't an invader. But when it was escaping, I'm like, okay, obviously, there is now a problem. We have now have the setup for the problem of the episode, but I don't know what the problem is yet. I just know it's there. Ah, <laughs> uh, and poor Spike is all dejected. And poor Luna going to bed fully clothed. <laughs> I mean, I always thought that kind of bib thing on the front was removable. <laughs> her slippers were cute, though. <laughs> I actually didn't catch her slippers. Hmm. There was a set of four on the ground near the bed. Nice hmm. dark blue with a crescent moon. Good catch. Uh, I think it's time to move on to the main six's dreams and their nightmare equivalents. Rarities was pretty mild compared to everyone else, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, my problem with rarities is all the dresses should be different. I know that would be a problem for the animators, but why would she want 20 of the same dress? Yeah, I think it was more of an animation thing. And at this point, it also shows the one slight problem I had with the episode. It seemed like the way Luna was reacting and denying that anyone can help her was kind of forced and was resolved a bit kind of quickly in a way in the episode to me, but not at the same time. Then we got the actual resolution at the end of the episode. That was the only minor nitpick for me that kind of threw me off through the rest of these dreams. And what is the next dream? Well, I had stuff before we even got to the nightmares because you just totally glossed over Pet Spa Day and all the fun that happened there and how quickly Luna showed up, which was very impressive for probably being in Canterlot, and if she was winking, why didn't she just go ahead and wink inside? And in any instance, how did she know exactly where they were? Because, you know, Twilight could have technically been anywhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I completely forgot about the spa scene and the fact that Pinkie Pie is all wide awake, but not really wide awake. Yes, and all of the 
Pinkie Pie, AJ, shippers were probably thrilled that Pinkie Pie showed up in AJ's bed. <laughs> and I like the, I'm wide awake! <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> so, more with that scene? Um, I guess that's enough since we already started going into nightmares. <laughs> so what was the next dream? Because I kind of forgot what dream is next after rarity. I didn't realize we were going to try to do them in order, or I would have written it down. <laughs> Well, you seem to want to do everything else in order in this episode. <laughs> so in that case, I'm going to jump straight to Rainbow Dash then. Because <laughs> that's the one that most sticks in my memory other than Fluttershy. But I'm going to talk about that one after this one because Luna's like, oh my god, she's it's already here. What do you mean? This is my favorite dream. Back off. <laughs> yeah, I was Rainbow Dash. That's an awesome dream because you're winning. And yay for seeing the changelings yet again, even if it was only in a dream. And then we get the flowers. <laughs> Very malicious flowers. It was bad enough that they were cute, but they were maliciously cute. And that melody, that melody. Writers, you are cruel. <laughs> you know what's crazy? At first, I thought the voices for them were the voice actor for Twilight Sparkle. No, the voices of the flowers is the voice actor for Big Mac. At least he got some more lines. Yeah, but it's surprising because, like, wow, that sounds just like Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls. So they must have gotten Tara Strong. Nope. Look at the credits. It says voice actor for Big Mac and the sunflowers. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, those sunflowers were awful and also brought to mind a Gen 1 episode with very beautiful but very dangerous sentient flowers, one of which was a sunflower. Ah, and Fluttershy's dream sticks in my mind because of the, wait a minute, she wants to be a pet? Oh, the stories. I know, I'm like, oh. Down, fanfic writers, down! <laughs> oh, I know, I was like, oh my god, now everyone's going to write a pet play story with Fluttershy. Oh, painful. Down, fanfic writers, down! <laughs> Nothing keeps a good or bad fanfic writer down. <laughs> uh, now on to Pinkie Pie. When something just pops to my head randomly. <laughs> and then I, that reminded me of, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't help it. It just popped in there. What just popped into your head, Ray? We used to go camping. We used to eat Steve Puff marshmallows. <laughs> and I think they even are referencing that because when Pinkie Pie wakes up and Luna goes, as long as you didn't dream of anyone else in Ponyville. <laughs> And Pinkie Pie goes, oh, sorry, I did. See, everyone makes mistakes. But her dream is one of my nitpicks because the Tantibus gets left behind in that box when Pinkie Pie does a scene shift. But that matches the other nightmares of when the Tantibus would be leaving. So wouldn't the Tantibus already be gone and it wouldn't have had exposure to, oh, I don't know, everyone in Ponyville? But... I think the thing is, the Tentibus was still in there, but Luna left, because Luna couldn't find the Tentibus in there and assumed it left already. But the Tentibus would have also had to catch up, because it was left in another scene. Hmm, I don't know. We don't really know the overall powers and how it can manipulate itself inside of dreams. So it could have still been in the statue and then still been in the ice cream cone, and then left. Yeah, it's all semantics. Moving on. <laughs> Let's see, AJ's was pretty standard, her crops going bad. Which means no money, which means no farm. Mm-hmm. And Twilight, nice mirror mask reference with the flying books in the library. Ah. And how horrible to get attacked by books as a book lover. That sucks. <laughs> and then we get into the, unless there was anything else between here and the master dream, as I call it. Of course, because I want to go back and nitpick, why does Luna have to be flying in order to be sending out all of these dream seeker lines? I would think it would be easier to concentrate if your hooves were on the ground instead of having to think about flying plus handling all this complicated magic. I throw it under the category of because it looks cool. I was just about to say that because it's visually more interesting. Plus her coming down from the shadows of the rafters is kind of a cool image. Mm -hmm. Like I said, because it looks cool. All right. So massively multiplayer shared dream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the fun that ensues. <laughs> References galore and things you wouldn't really expect. So, Big Mac dreams of being a unicorn. Interesting. 
Yes, and Derpy wants to be giant. And a cat. Yes, that was a pretty good meow. And then we have Lyra and Bon Bon, referencing cat dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we have uh, Berry Punch being a little lightheaded. Can't imagine why. <laughs> I love how she's like all happy when she first lets go of the balloon and then she realizes, uh-oh, <laughs> this could be a problem. <laughs> and I like how once again we have to point out to everyone like, um, guys, we're in a dream. <laughs> You can do whatever you can think of. Back pace real quick. The houses turning into monsters reminded me of the movie Monster House, which I never actually watched. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I've seen that movie. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. Monster House, Monster Houses. You know, it's there. And then another awesome reference back to Big Mac. Magical girl, anyone? Princess Big Mac. <laughs> which was pretty awesome, and it was actually a rather manly transformation sequence. Oh, specifically, a uh, particular Magical Girls series jumps to mind when I say Magical Girls sequence. Sailor Moon. I was going to jokingly say, especially since we're talking about a male here. Cute High Earth Defense Club love, I'll say it for you. Yeah, because I was like, I, I don't know if I can say that right now. Ah, so, one of my favorite parts of this group dream is actually the near final shape of the shadow creature was getting really kind of cool. No, it looked really awesome, but I was going to go back to Filthy Rich being the silver, not the silver surfer. Iceman? Uh, what was the one? Yeah, I was trying to think. The one from Spider-Man and Friends. <laughs> or X-Men. He was an X-Men at one point. Yeah. So I liked when they figured out how to dream big, because Spike goes all out, Filthy Rich goes all out, Fluttershy, it was interesting that she went Flutterbat first and then went and got the evil monster angel bunny, which when you're above its head like that, it can't really see you, so pointing is kind of pointless. <laughs> That's a real minor nitpick there, but... You know, th it's the episodes I like the most and like the least that I nitpick the most, so... <laughs> <laughs> that actually brought up another point for me that I had to bring up about Fluttershy's dream, of the fact that it, the dream itself kind of shows how... The fandom versus Fluttershy sees Angel Bunny. Fluttershy sees Angel Bunny as this kind creature, and then the Nightmare version is how the fandom sees him. <laughs> Pretty much. And considering that the main six knew going in that this was a dream sequence, I want to know why they didn't go Rainbow Power. I mean, AJ and Rainbow Dash did pretty good because they went Power Pony. But Twilight, you reconstructed your treehouse and got the book bats? Um, Rainbow Power? Oh, I don't know. Elements of Harmony, since you can't do Elements of Harmony in the real world, but you can sure dream them. <laughs> the lesson's actually pretty good in this episode. You gotta learn to forgive yourself. Yes, very good lesson. And I think this really added some depth to Luna. You know, we don't get to see her enough for her to really get a lot of establishment. It was nice to hear her talk so much this episode. You can hear the progression of her language pattern and you know, her ability to live in current time and current situation, but she's still laboring under the guilt of what she did before and, you know, has a little bit of a complex of, I must not let anyone else suffer. This is my fault, therefore I will take care of it. Though this makes me want a Celestia episode all the more. <laughs> we could definitely use one of those, even though Celestia's gotten a lot more screen time than Luna. We haven't really had a celestia focused episode and this would be the second luna focused episode first being luna eclipsed not counting any episodes where she was mainly nightmare moon so that throws out the pilot and the flashback episodes even though it would give luna another episode i would love to have like either a celestia or a sister two sisters episode just something focused on them even like it was like a flashback like celestia is telling twilight or the main six about something that happened in the past they need to know about for something that's going to happen in the future. Where the whole episode's a flashback of what happened when Luna and Celestia were ruling the kingdom by themselves. Because uh, we've gotten a couple glimpses of that with the white alicorn potion that Zakora had. So, what are your final thoughts? That I really enjoyed this episode. My nitpicks, while in this recording were many, are pretty minor. This was fun, showing you know, the functionality of the Night Princess, giving us some more actual character for Luna as opposed to all fan speculation. I agree with you that it probably negates a bit of the Nightmare Rarity comic art, 
which to me, almost anything in the comics being negated is a plus. I really like the episode. It's definitely showing that season five is one of the stronger seasons. And in a way, it's so far breaking the rule that I thought was happening, where we have one good season, then we have one okay season, then we have one really good season, then we have another okay season. This time we had season four, which is a really good season, and now we're having season five, which is turning out to be a really good season. I think it's because what happened during season three, they were worried that they were probably going to be cancelled after that season. And now that they know they were renewed for, from what I understand, up till season seven, definitely but most likely up to season 10. So, yeah, I think the writers are like, hey, we can actually, you know, loosen things up and right now, since we're not worrying about, uh, do we have to worry about this? Do we have to worry about that? So the writers are more confident. They know they can do stuff, and they know they're allowed to really keep things going. And the lesson was really good in this episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drawing the line between taking responsibility and moving forward. Because Luna took responsibility, but she was continuing to punish herself for something that couldn't be changed when she herself had already changed. She wasn't the same person that made those mistakes in the past. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 13. Do princesses dream of magic sheep? Okay, and that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. Enjoy Lux's art? You can find more of it on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Want to keep up to date with our podcast? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like our channel? Please leave a friendly comment and consider subscribing. Really like Lux's art? You can have some of your own. He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.